Hi, I'm Monica and let's talk about my last TBR for 2022. As per usual, I am setting up my TBR for two months, which will be November and December. This TBR, I wanted to tag a lot of dark academia books as well as a few rereads I've been intending to reread. I think it's around 9 to 10 books, but let's just get right into it. My first book of this month is Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. I'm not going to hold this up this entire time that I'm talking about it because it's a huge book. It is around 900 pages, I think. I did mention Priory in my most intimidated books tag. I think I made that video like in the middle of the year. I'm ready to tackle this one because I think there's a prequel or a sequel coming out soon. Priory was a standalone, but it's being expanded into a series. I only know that there's a lot of characters in this book and there's dragons. And with House of the Dragon, I want more fantasy books with dragons. So I think that was my motivator to pick up this book. In the next book on my TBR is my venture into dark academia and it is The Secret History by Donna Tart. So with this one, I was inspired by Legendborn even though Legendborn is really young adult fantasy but it does have like dark academia setting vibes. And I did want to dive into other academia books so I decided to pick up. I think this is like a so-called classic academia book. But as far as I know, I'm not really going to read too far into this one because I want to be surprised. I know it follows a group of eccentric college students being led by a classics professor and we're dealing with the elements of a few deaths, thinking beyond the normal and philosophy. And I also think there's a thriller aspect as well. I'm going to be curious about how I like this one. And going right into another dark academia book and that would be Babel by R.F. Kung. So this book has been spoken a lot online and I think it's like a commentary on the secret history so that's why I wanted to read the secret history before diving into Babel. And I have previously tried to read from this author. I tried to read The Poppy War but I couldn't get through it so I'm hoping Babel would change my mind about this author. I do want to give The Poppy War another chance. Babel is more so a fantasy with historical fictional elements. In this world, there is power in translations, with words being lost in translation from one language to another. There is some sort of magic and power there, and in this world, you can craft that magic into something known as silver bars. We're following Robin who is a Chinese orphan and is being graced by a mysterious professor and he's being trained to enter Babel, being trained in many languages as well. So Babel is the Oxford University prestigious Royal Institute of Translation. However, in Britain, in this historical timeline, their imperial might is going to be starting an unjust war with China for power of the magic and opium. And with that, we will have student revolutions and colonial resistance as themes going in this book. I am really curious about how I will like this one because the concept itself is quite interesting and I am willing to give this author another shot. Okay, next we have another adult book and that is dealing with magical realism and I want to read Spells for Forgetting by Adrienne Young. I did mention this book in my most anticipated reads for books in October and December. In this book, we're following Emery Blackwood, whose life has changed from one night. That is when her best friend, Lily, died and her boyfriend at the time, August, is being accused of murdering her friend, Lily. Now, years later, Emery is living on the remote shores of an island and running her family's tea greeting business. On Shersha Island, there's a long history of folklore and magic, and Emery knows that something is about to go down. With that, one day, after 14 years that August Salt has left this island, he shows back up in town. No one really wants him back in town, and August is quite aware of that, but he's only back in the community to bury his mother's ashes. However, with that, August has to confront angry townsfolk and also interact with Emery, who was one wound that never healed. So I think there's going to be a creepy atmosphere exciting to this one, as well as really a lot of heartbreak and murder 
being involved in this one. Next up is a, an adult dystopian and it is Our Missing Hearts by Celeste Ng. In this one, we're following 12-year-old Bert Gardner living with his father who was a linguist but now shelves books at Harvard. But Bert's young existence isn't really one that is full of life and he knows to stay quiet and not bring attention to himself. This book is set in America and over the past decade, there has been new laws being put in place to preserve American culture. The authorities have granted permission to relocate children, especially those of Asian origin, and libraries are being forced to remove books that are considered unpatriotic. And that also includes poems that were written by Bird's mother. However, with Bird's mother, she just left three years ago and Bird himself doesn't really want to know much about his mother, but as being a child and he can't help but wonder. One day he does receive a letter with a mysterious drawing that somehow leads back to a connection to his mother. So I do think I will cry in this one and it will be a book with very powerful messages and let's see how I like an adult dystopian since I have not read a dystopian in quite some time. And another book on my TBR is a giant fantasy book and this is The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. This is over a thousand pages long. It's huge. Finally, I'm gonna reread this series and I've been intending to reread The Way of Kings and Words of Radiance in preparation to read books three and four and I think book five is releasing sometime next year. However, if you haven't heard of the Stormlight Archive, we are set in the world of Roshar where the landscape is brutal with its weather, wars, and politics. In Roshar, there is an ancient order known as the Knights Radiant and this ancient order fell, but their armor and magical shard blades remain, granting normal humans supernatural abilities to fight their wars. And with Brander Sanderson books, there's another huge magical system that I absolutely love in this book. It has a lot of use of light and in this world they kind of store their light in like little balls. It's also like their currency, so that's interesting if I am remembering it correctly. And a few of the main characters we follow. First up, we have Kaladin who was a medical apprentice, but then he is now a slave in a war he does not want to be in. We have Shalon who is trying to become a scholar, but is also a thief. And we also have Dalinar Kulin who is a commander of one of the armies at war. And he's also having visions of ancient times. So I love this book when I read it for the first time and I think I will really enjoy it the second time around. And next up we have another dark academia book and this time it is The Atlas Six by Olivia Blake. So this one was all over TikTok and social media and I'm wondering how I will feel about it since I think there was a lot of praise for it but then there was some criticisms as well. This book has the same formula as the other dark academia books. We have now a group of college-age students but this time they are all magicians and they are competing for something called initiation. And if you get initiated, you are securing a life of wealth, privilege, and power. And I think there's like a mysterious benefactor that is sponsoring these six characters and the only caveat is that they have to live and train together for a year, but only five of them can be initiated and one is eliminated and possibly killed. So at first, I was really hesitant to even pick this one up, but I think after like looking at the book itself, and I think there's like cool illustrations in this one, like there's illustrations, and I was browsing at Indigo and I was like, okay, why not? So I just picked this one up. And let's just see how it goes. And guess what? It is another reread as well as a dark academia book with Ninth House by Lee Bardugu. This one is an adult fantasy with occult themes, some graphic content, and secret societies set at the picturesque Yale University. I really recall liking Alex Stern, the main character, and her ability to see ghosts. Alex isn't a likable character, but I kind of like reading those type of books with these anti-heroes or unlikable characters because it just makes for an interesting read. But overall, I am excited to reread Ninth House to prepare for the sequel. I think it's called Warbent. 
Hellbent. It's called Hellbent with a creepy rabbit on the cover. So let's see how I like this one again. And my last book that I'm going to be putting on this TBR is a duology that I have said several times in many TBRs that I would reread. And I'm talking about the Six of Crows duology by Lee Bardugo as well. Okay, so I am still really determined to read this duology again. Me not reading this duology was just me being more attracted to other books at the time. And I didn't really feel like rereading Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom. But let's see how I like the crows this time around. And my motivator to reread this book again um, would be the season two of Shadow and Bone releasing I think maybe early next year and hopefully they will be read before 2022 is up. <laughs> and I believe those were all the books I have for my last TBR of 2022. There are some giant fantasy books in there, some rereads, some dark academia books, but I'm really excited to tackle all of them and I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Also comment down below what is on your November or December TBR curious to find out. Thank you for stopping by. I hope you can give me a huge thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below, and also ring the bell to be notified. And I'll see you all in my next video. Bye!